I'm not getting. Oh, there we go. Now I'm getting levels. Okay. There we go. And we're good. Check. 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 A little metal in the morning. It's always good. Oh, sorry. No, you're good. All right. I'm getting audio through mine. Do you want to give me a mic check on yours? Check. Can you hear it? Check, check. All right. We're getting audio. We're back. All right. Now, uh, let's try to remember where we were. Okay. We we're, just discussed uh, that uh, the Coopers had begun as something small, uh, working towards something large. It wasn't too difficult to get people to jump on board. Mm -hmm. uh, it's the casual fans that we're, not, we're trying to focus on now. And most importantly, we're here on game day. Yes. It's here. Now, there's been a couple of things that the Coopers have done with Louisville City to make sure that you all get the right experience, you all get what you're looking for. Um, importantly, oh, I'm thinking back to when the uh, seats were changed. Yes. So first, you guys were put out left field. Out left field. Which is nice because there's a big bar there, yes. right? And it's a nice patio area. There's some bleachers, but that's not a very good view. You lose the half, that final third, uh, especially if we're attacking in that final third on the right field side, left field side. Um, it wasn't a great view. So what the club did for us after um, much debate, uh, they changed us to the third baseline, which is directly behind now the south facing goal. And so when our team attacks south, we will have a full audience. They will be able to see us chanting towards them, cheering them on. And the seats make for great seats. They're not bleachers. They're seat back now, which uh, there are a few stadiums in this league that they don't, they're bleachers. They don't have seat backs. Mm -hmm. so. And it's, it's a nice experience. This is one of the nicest minor league parts. Not of, a bad of any seat in the house. In the country. And it's, it's, it's great to be able to use it. I think Louisville City is very happy with it. I think you all are going to do good things with it. Now, also, you've got this place against the grain. You've been here mm -hmm. for meet and greet specifically. What is it like to be able to be a part of a group that really the team has gone out of their way to give you all incentives, like these meet and greets, mm -hmm. you know, uh, say on the seats and things like that? Sure. I mean, to what extent are they reaching out? Is that what you're asking? Yeah. What, what's it like to, to be oh, a part oh. of, of – a group that has the, the ear of the team. I don't know too many professional teams, football, basketball, or soccer, that are as communicative with, uh, available with their supporters group. Um, I know supporters groups are typically uh, of the soccer genre. You will see supporters groups in football, but it's a different, it's a different mentality. Um, but they've opened up their doors to us. They ask us as many questions as we can possibly, uh, as we can possibly answer. They asked us what kind of atmosphere they want set. Um, They've been nothing more than friendly with us. Yeah, mm -hmm. very friendly. Yeah, that's we can, great. We can call them up. We can ask them questions. Uh, they've given us early entrance into the stadium to be able to set up all of our TIFO. That's exciting. We're going to start that here probably in the next hour or so. Okay. Well, so this is uh, – it's a, it's a baseball park, and it's a Correct. baseball stadium. And, you know, say what you want about the field and everything, but you guys are going to be changing that atmosphere. What do you hope to achieve in taking it from sort of a laid-back baseball day – to 90 minutes of intense soccer. That will happen if we can stay loud the entire 90 minutes. When you're at a baseball game, you're told when to clap, you're told when to cheer, the seventh inning stretch. But in soccer, of course, you'll know that uh, as a fan, you want to be up standing for 90 minutes cheering on your team. Uh, we will change by doing that. Um, all the banners that they put up, that Louisville City has put up, uh, a lot of purple, I'm trying to make it look less bats, more Louisville City. Uh, the baselines have been taken out. The sod is put in. It looks like a proper soccer stadium. Um, I haven't seen the complete green sod yet. I'm hoping it's the same color. We're doing all that. Uh, today we'll learn a little more. We don't know quite what to do, what it sounds like, how it's going to work, but we're figuring it out one step at a time. Okay. Now, uh, there's are, are there there's songs, there's chants, there's rituals, there's TIFOs for the fans. Uh, is there anything that people should be aware of coming out here today that they should know to look for? Are there any chants or rituals that you're going to start at certain times or anything? That's a good question. We will be singing My Old Kentucky Home, which we do have lyrics for, sheet lyrics. Um, Hopefully that, everybody around here knows the lyrics, but, you know. I could touch up on them a little <laughs> bit myself. Uh, that's at our website at uh, louisvillecoopers.com, I believe. And if you can't find it there, you can go to our Facebook page, Louisville Coopers, and you can find a printout PDF there. Um, aside from the chants, we're going to have some color block section. We have TIFO planned. Um, again, it's... It's, 
I don't know how to describe it. It's about showing up. I want to see what happens this first game. We have stuff planned, but will it go according to plan? I don't know. I don't know. I mean, well, I'm we'll drinking right out. now, so we'll see. Hey, everything's gone according to plan so far. The yes. team's here. You guys are yes. out here. Timothy, thanks so much for joining me. Thank you for having We're gonna me move on, on. We're going to preview the rest of the USL action. Good luck out there. Thank you. Stay warm. Good luck, City. All right. Chad, if you want to come on. Thank you for thank you for coming on, Chad. Thanks for having me, Dalton. This man needs no introduction. It's Chad Hollingsworth. He knows everything about USL, and that's what we're going to talk about. Um, first of all, you're in Louisville. Are you excited to be here for the inaugural Kings Cup Clash? I'm terribly excited to be here for the inaugural Kings Cup Clash. Um, you know, kudos to the Coopers, to uh, Mr. Stopanol, the rest of the ownership group, front office, for bringing together a team in a relatively short amount of time for nothing. I mean, the fact that this is brought all about from fan support and a little bit of interest from some guys with some money, this is fantastic. I'm excited to be down here in, in LC to watch some quality soccer at a quality stadium. Now, there's two things about you that we have to get to first, right? First of all, the scarf. You're wearing a Dayton Dutch Lion scarf. Do we need to do we need to talk a little bit about that? <laughs> yeah, we can talk a little well, bit about that. We just want to console you. You know, it's okay. Well, a consolation not totally necessary. I, I still have got a team, right? Mm -hmm. uh, we're mm -hmm. not going to be in USL this year. We're going to be in USL PDL, and that's fine with me. Uh, if you ask me, PDL is where the team belonged all along. Back in uh, 2011 when we decided to promote to USL Pro at the time, we really weren't looking to go to the top of USL. We were going to be a USL 2 team, then the thing with NASL and USL Pro happened, USL 2 goes away, and all of a sudden we're playing in the top flight in USL. We weren't quite ready for that. Managed to make it to the playoffs in 2013, um, but I think the club really lacked the resources to do everything that's necessary to be successful both on and off the pitch in USL. So glad to support the team in PDL. Yeah. Well, uh, the other thing is, is you have your own blog called Scratching the Pitch. Uh, that's going to launch on Monday, correct? Going to launch on Monday, and the first thing I'm going to write about, today's match between Louisville City and St. Louis. Awesome. We hope there's good things for you to say about it. Um, talk a little bit about what you're going to cover in that blog and why why you're scratching the pitch. Well, uh, scratching the pitch, um, you know, I was with Reckless Challenge for a number of years and uh, decided to leave that organization. Uh, nothing but personal reasons. Reckless Challenge is still a fantastic organization. You can still get your USL soccer news there. But if you want some more USL soccer news, come on over to my site. Um, you know, I've been known over the last couple of years for breaking some big stories, and I'll do that from time to time. But what I really want to do is bring you the personalities from around the league, uh, you know, get to know some of the players and have the American public get to know some of the players and, and some of the staff and um, provide some of the analytics that I do with a slightly different bent than what you're going to find on a lot of other sites. Absolutely. Well, well that's awesome. So. What we're going to talk about now is the USL. It's it's grown a lot in the last year. Holy moly. Where did it come from? Last year, how many teams were there? 14? 14 teams last year. Uh, 12 of those teams are returning this year. Uh, two have gone down to PDL with Charlotte Eagles and my Dutch Lions, as we talked about a minute ago. Got a bunch of new teams coming in this year. And if uh, you listen to what prior president Tim Holt had to say, we're looking at 40 teams in short order. Um, That's a lot. You know, coming from where we came from in 2011, wow, this is amazing. And if you really want to go back to it, USL started in the late 80s mm -hmm. as an indoor soccer club or indoor soccer league down in Texas, New Mexico. Mm -hmm. And here we are today. Uh, no offense to NASL fans, but I, we truly are, apart from, NAS, apart from MLS, the best run, best supported league in North America. Well, now – what I want to talk about a little bit is Orlando City left the USL last year to go to MLS. That's how Louisville landed the franchise. They purchased the vacated Orlando City franchise. Are those big shoes to fill for Louisville City? I mean, they, they dominated the USL, it seemed like, over the four years. You know that, that question. There. Yeah, you know the answer. Those are huge shoes to fill. I forget how many Commissioner's Cups and, and, and postseason championships they won. I think they won three of each in four or five years, which is outstanding. Not only – you saw the support that they had, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, packing the Citrus Bowl, packing ESPN facility at Disney last year, Ruckus, Iron Lion Firm, and others. So you, you've got the on-the-field dominance you have to match. You've got the off-the-field success that you have to match. If you're really going to try to fill those shoes, um, I hope those ties with OCSC are, are still close. Yeah, how, how beneficial do you think that is with somebody like Phil Rollins, who's obviously – can flex a lot of muscle in the soccer world. You know, what do you think that's going to help Louisville City? Do you, do you think there's good connections there? 
I, I think there are good connections there. I, I don't know. I'd have to talk to uh, Miss Duffy to find out for sure how those connections have been maintained. I can't imagine that uh, the guys are strangers. I mean, there's the MLS USL affiliation that you're still maintaining. There's going to be lots of conversations between the front offices and the coaches. I'm having access to Adrian Heath. It's going to be huge. Uh, don't know yet if we're going to play the same style of soccer here in uh, Louisville that they did in Orlando. But uh, if you are, I know the coach was an assistant down there with Orlando for a while, so I imagine it's not going to be too different. Mm -hmm. have, who doesn't want to have access to Orlando City if you're in USL? I don't know. I certainly do. Well, what I want to do is now we're going to bring in Josh Beeman and Kyle Kepner. We're going to talk with them a little bit about the Western Conference, which is almost a separate league from the Eastern Conference this year because there's very little crossover in the teams that play. So we're going to bring them in real quick. We're going to talk a little bit about the Western Conference. And then we're going to come back and preview all of today's USL action with you. So let me bring those guys in right now. All right, we've sent the invitations to get them on board here. Hopefully, they'll join us in short order. So the Western Conference is uh, dominated by Sacramento Republic as of last year, right? They they finished near the top of the table and then obviously won the USL Championship last year. Um, what do you look for out of them this season? I look for more of the same. Uh, they lost some guys uh, due to the uh, affiliation with Portland ending, Portland starting their own USL club. Um, but Rodrigo Rodriguez in midfield, um, if it hadn't been for Kevin Molino last year in Orlando, uh, Roro was a close second in MVP voting. Um, any other year, he would have won. So anytime you can build a team around him, you're in good shape. Got a strong back four. They're struggling with some injuries right now. But um, got to look for more of the same out of Sacramento this year. They're going to be a, a club that's hard to contend with. Okay. Well, let's see. Our Josh and Kyle, let's see if we got them here yet. Are they in here? I don't think so. Okay, so they've got a lot of fan support. At their first game last year, they had about 20,000 people. Is that right? 20,000 plus. Yeah, I think it was around 26,000, if I'm not mistaken. That's huge. Now, Louisville Soccer Field doesn't even hold that many. Um, but what is it like to, to launch with such a big base there? Oh, gosh. I mean, that had to be such a thrill for the front office and for the players. Can't imagine walking out onto a USL pitch for the first time with 26,000 fans and, and Tower Bridge Battalion is one of the best supporters groups in the league, um, making lots of noise. Um, mm. That's got to be out, you know, built for MLS, and yeah. they proved it right out of yeah. the gate. Hashtag. Now, uh, let's let's see if we can get them in here because we obviously want to hear from Josh and Kyle. They didn't get anything from me, so let's try that one more time. All right, hopefully they'll join us here in just a second. So we got some more new teams out in the West. Is that correct? We got yeah, a lot. Yeah, we got a boatload of new teams. Uh, a lot of them are the MLS2 teams. You know, you're looking at Vancouver, Portland, Seattle. Um, you know, LA was there last year. But um, Austin's going to be a good team out in the West, a, an independent USL team. Mm -hmm. um, the Western Conference is going to be a bloodbath this year, I think. I think that a lot of the talent – much like in the NBA, resides mm -hmm. out west in USL. Yeah, well, we got Joshua Beeman here. Joshua, welcome to the show. Thanks for joining us today. Hi. Uh, it actually worked. All right. I'm, I'm really having a little bit of that. trouble I, hearing, Josh, for so hopefully on. we'll be able to get that going. Who needs to hear him? Look at that face. He looks great.
We're all having a few issues today. That happens with the first run. Sorry about that, guys. Uh, is this the any better? Is great. Hear it against the grain. I'm going to have to go get one as soon as we're done. It does. You can hear him? Okay. Well, Josh, we're going to let you talk. We're not exactly sure what you're going to say because we can't hear you, but I want you to preview a little bit about Sacramento Republic and what we should look for out of them this year. All right. Well, it's uh, it might be a little bit difficult to preview exactly what's going to go on with the Republic because they're having a lot of injury issues right now. They've got uh, on the injury list, they've got Nemanja Vukovic, 2014 USL Defender of the Year. They've got Tommy Stewart out, who is the leading goal scorer. And they also have, uh, oh, geez. Well, they, they have, uh, oh, Max Alvarez, a uh, Sacramento native and a uh, really big contributor to their team last year. He's also out uh, on injury. So that's four, three really big uh, impact players that are out right now. So as soon as they get healthy, we'll know exactly what Sacramento is going to be capable of. But I think uh, even with all their depth uh, players, even with uh, relying mostly on their depth players, they have enough talent to be a USL playoff team. I'm not sure without those three guys and without Roro because he's also a little bit injured right now. Uh, I'm not sure if they'll be a championship winning team, but uh, definitely I think uh, we're going to see Sacramento make a return to the playoffs. Uh, maybe not run roughshod over everybody in the West, but definitely a playoff team this year. Okay. Now, uh, obviously, Seattle had a, a bit of a good game against Sacramento last weekend. They put it 4-2. I know it's, it was tough. It was a tough loss. They got out ahead. What do you expect out of teams, out of these MLS 2 teams? Do you expect them to bring a lot more talent and competition in the West? Do you expect them to raise the level? I mean, you saw that game. Tell us a little bit about what you expect out of those teams this year. Oh, absolutely. I mean, uh, ever, ever since the beginning of the... W when a lot of teams decided that they were going to put in the uh, MLS2 teams, people were, like, basically predicting the downfall of the league, basically going off of one team's attendance, and that was uh, LA Galaxy 2. But they always seemed to... Uh, kind of ignore the fact that all these MLS2 teams would bring immense levels of talent, even though they would be underdeveloped and more raw talent. But all these teams are bringing up really talented players. Uh, I know you guys can't hear me, so, you know, probably looks good. But uh, the, uh, all these MLS2 teams are bringing really talented players, and I think that uh, it's just going to raise just the average level of player talent up and it's just going to make the league as a whole better. That said, uh, I, think, um, I think some teams are going to be more competitive than others. Some teams might be going more, uh, more for youth players and not uh, necessarily be as competitive that way. You know, playing 18, 19-year-olds against grown men isn't necessarily a, uh, a way to win every single game. But we'll see. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, now... Here's the big question. Is Sacramento Republic going to repeat this year? What do you think? If they get everybody healthy, then yes. Yes, they will, I think. Uh, I mean, the playoffs is kind of a crapshoot always, but uh, I think that if Sacramento can get into the playoffs, which they will, and they have everybody healthy, then they definitely have a good chance of repeating the USO Pro title. So I think they can take it, yes. Okay, so we are running a little bit of short on time. It took a little while with the technical difficulties. So, Josh, I want to thank you for coming on. I really appreciate it. We're going to get you back on next time to, re to preview the West again and talk about the games that happen until then. Josh, thanks so much for coming on. All right, thanks for having me. See you, Josh. All right, so we're going to turn back to this, this matchup between Louisville City and St. Louis. What should we be looking for in this game? Obviously, we know that O'Connor's going to run a bit of a high press. He's going to attack. They're going to be running... A lot of people forward looking for Matt Fondy. I know you're a big fan. We'll talk about that in a second. But what should we look at? Look for out of Dale Shilley's team? Yeah, uh, to me, St. Louis is a bit of a wild card. If you look at the roster, chock full of players from the St. Louis area. Um, a lot of them with professional soccer experience. You look at their first signing, Mike Ambersley. Um, if you read some of the blogs from around the league, you'll hear that he's not having the uh, preseason that some people might have hoped. There's another guy behind him, Lynch who might be the goal scorer that St. Louis needs up top. Um, don't know which one of those guys is going to get the nod today. Um, 
Then you look towards the back, the guy who's going to play center mid, they just signed out of MLS, uh, Barklage, I believe is his name. If he's the leader that they need him to be, um, can keep that defense organized and, and uh, distribute from that center mid position, then I think um, St. Louis is going to have some positive things to build on. That being said, I'm going to make my bold prediction today. Um, I, I think Louisville City, I'm going to play to the home crowd a little bit, is going to have their way with St. Louis. I apologize to the St. Louisans. Um, I just am really appreciative of the roster that's been put together here in Louisville. Um, and gosh, I have such a huge man crush on Matt Fondy. So why, why is that? Well, everybody seems to love Matt Fondy. And obviously, we've seen it here in Louisville in the preseason. He notched a lot of goals in the preseason. Four goals in four games. Obviously, one of them was a scoreless game. So that means really four goals in three games. What else What else does he bring to this to this field? What's he going to bring to this team? Um, I, leadership. I mean, he's a guy who's been playing professional soccer for a while. And... Uh, this isn't his first trip through USL, you know, back when he was uh, Orange County. Um, and I don't know why, but he was kind of a super sub for the last 10 games of their season. Uh, he did make a few starts in those. But you just mentioned four goals in four games. How about 10 goals in 10 games to finish that stretch and push them into the playoffs? So, I mean, he's got the golden foot. I, the, he scores goals. Mm -hmm. And the only thing that's slightly less immaculate than his goal-scoring ability are those flowing locks. Uh, that's what I was going to ask you about next. Obviously, the Coopers have latched onto that. It's beautiful. He loves it. Um, so what I want to do now is take us through the rest of the MLS games for the day. Let me get out the schedule here. All right, coming up today, uh, we've got FC Montreal and Toronto FC. What do you expect out of that matchup? Well, I wasn't expecting a whole lot. And then I saw Toronto open the season against Charleston. And uh, they were a lot better than I expected them to be. Um, having said that, I know that some of their stars on Toronto FC2 have been called up to the big club because of the international break. So guys like Hamilton aren't going to be available. Um, I still, I like what I saw. They built from the back. I uh, don't know a whole lot about FC Montreal, but if you're going to force me to pick a winner, I'm going to go with Toronto in that matchup. Okay. What about New York Red Bulls 2 versus Rochester Rhinos at 2? Who takes that one? Uh, I'm going to go with the Rhinos just because Brendan Doherty and uh, Coach Lilly might string me up if I pick the Red Bulls. Um, not a whole lot available about the Red Bulls roster until just recently, um, but you do know a little bit about the Rhinos roster, and they've got a formidable defense, and that's one of the things that Lilly and his Rhinos teams have always been known for. So if you're going to keep it a low-scoring match, you know, 1-0, 2-1 kind of a match, I'm going to go with the Rhinos. Now, if this gets into an up-and-down-the-pitch goal-scoring fest, I might reverse what I'm thinking and go with the Red Bulls. Okay. So Pittsburgh Riverhounds kick off against the Harrisburg City Islanders at 7 p.m. Uh, what, do, what do we look for out of that one? You're looking for a new style out of the Riverhounds under new coach Mark Steffens, who was with the Charlotte Eagles last season. Uh, they almost completely overhauled their roster, as have the City Islanders. Um, but I've always been impressed with what Steffens has done in USL with a very limited budget. He's got a few more resources now in Pittsburgh. I think the fans are going to love that style of play, and I'm, I'm going to pick the Riverhounds at home in the first round of the Keystone Cup. Okay. Um, then we got the Wilmington Hammerheads FC and Richmond Kickers. It's also at 7 p.m. Uh, what, what about these teams? This game is in Richmond, right? Uh, yes. I believe it is, and um, so Richmond's going to win. Um, not to disparage what the Hammerheads have going on. Coach Porter, through the stretch, Last year, pushed the Hammerheads into the playoffs, brought a lot of those guys back. I really like Sunny Jane. Um, he's a dynamic player and can do some things. But I think if you're going to look at the 10 outfield players, Richmond might have the best 10 outfield players in the East and if not in the whole league. Okay. Uh, Tulsa Roughnecks, Oklahoma City Energy. That's at uh, 8 p.m. Uh, this could be a wild match. Um, you know, this is obviously an in-state rivalry. And when you look at what Oklahoma City did last year in some of the rivalry games, particularly against Arizona, those games got physical and chippy. And um, I know a couple of the players on the Roughnecks, too, who don't mind to mix it up in that fashion. So this could be a really physical matchup. Um, what I'm really looking forward to in this match is to see what Gibson Bardley, who's going to be on the wing for uh, Tulsa, I'm going to see what he can do. He was a goal scorer a couple of years ago in Dayton, and uh, since then went to play in Sweden, and now he's back in USL. And I'm looking forward to him having a breakout season in Tulsa. Okay. Orange County Blues FC and Arizona United. What should we look for out in Phoenix? 
I think you should look for Arizona United to dominate this game. Um, of all the existing teams who made offseason moves, I am most impressed with Arizona. You bring in Rob Valentino on the back line, Jose Cuevas in the midfield. You signed Dennis Chin. You re-signed Top. Or you signed, he was on loan last year, but now under contract with Arizona. They've done the most to improve their team than anyone else. And I think for owner Kyle Ng, he must be thinking championship or bust. Orland, or Orange County, on the other hand, have brought back a lot of the same guys who didn't do much better than finishing ahead of the Dutch Lions in the table last year, which is not saying a whole lot. Although I do have uh, a lot of hope for, the, for their new head coach. Okay. Now that game also kicking off at Anteater Stadium, UC Irvine, who Louisville, of course, outed in the first game of the NCAA tournament, March Madness. Uh, now the last game we got is Los Dos and Sacramento Republic. What do we look for out of that game? Oh, my. If, if, if I weren't in Louisville today and if Louisville and St. Louis weren't playing – their inaugural games in the, in the King's Cup. This would be my game of the week. Um, anyone who's been following the league at all has to remember the miracle at Bonnie in the USL Pro semifinal last year. Um, Los Dos took a 2-0 lead into the 70th minute, and that's when Roro showed up, uh, converted a PK in the 70th, another in the 85th, and then the game winner late in the match on just this sick free kick, right? Mm -hmm. And it, it was a great match, and uh, there's a good rivalry out there. The other thing to look for is that both of these teams need to get some points early in the season. Sacramento obviously didn't pick up any points in their first match last week, and uh, although Los Dos had plenty of opportunities against Real Monarchs, they couldn't find the back of the net. So I don't think either one of these teams wants to get come out of out of the second match with only one or no points in, in the table. So this is an important early season matchup between two quality teams. Okay, so uh, today we got Louisville City kicking off against St. Louis Football Club today at 3 p.m. here at Louisville Slugger Field. And uh, we've heard about the veterans that are on these teams. Who's your breakout star today? Who do you think is going to step up and take the stage? Or do you think anybody will? Wow. Um, I can't get over my man crush on Fondy mm -hmm. to even think about any of the younger guys. I don't know, maybe one of the guys from uh, St. Louis that we haven't paid a whole lot of attention to mm -hmm. um, who's kind of flown under the radar here during preseason. Um, maybe Lynch that I mentioned earlier, he might be a guy that makes a name for himself in this league, and it, it might start today. Uh, for the Cooper's sake, I hope that's not the case. But uh, I've got just as many friends in St. Louis as I, have, as I have here in Louisville, so we'll have to wait and find out. All right. Well, Chad Hollingsworth, thanks so much for joining us today. This is the first pregame pint with the Louisville Coopers live here at Against the Grain Brewery. If you tweet at us about the, the pregame pint, tweet at Dalton underscore Maine and at Lou Coopers, you will be entered for a chance to win dinner for two at Texas Roadhouse. We want to thank Texas Roadhouse for supporting us in that. We want to give a special thanks to the Lou Coopers for joining us. I want to give a special thanks to Against the Grain for letting us host here. And we look for everyone out there at 3 p.m. Thanks so much for joining us.